Hey there everyone, this is John Morbley from Creative 3D. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to create this um, abstract object. So in here in Blender, I'm going to actually select the cube, the camera and the light and delete them. Hit the X key. And I'm going to go in here and create a circle. So once I get the circle here, um, you can either leave it at 32 or you can reduce it down like maybe 20. Depends on how much detail you want. Here I'm going to go down to 20. Alright, so now that we like what we have, let's go ahead and go to object mode. We're going to add in an empty. So we're going to go with the plane axis. And it's exactly the center, which is great. So now we can go back in and start adjusting and adding some modifiers. So let's bring this up a little bit. Hit the modifier with the circle selected. And we're going to go in and say array. Now in the array section here, we're going to bring this up to about 60. And then we're going to adjust the relative offset to 0 on the X, 0 on the Y, and on the Z, we're going to bring that up to 1. Okay, now we're going to go constant offset, and we're going to bring this down. So let's go in again on the X, put it at 0, and then the Z, we're going to put that at 1 for now. So now it's actually stacking it upward, which is what we want. I'm going to down select this and make sure we select the actual. Um, object offset which is going to be the empty so we selected that and then we can actually bring down the stack a little bit so we can go back to the Z and bring that down so we'll bring this down to about 0.29 somewhere there cool now select the empty and we're going to start doing some adjustments on this so we're going to scale this down to give it an effect so we're going to go at 0.9 on X, 0.9 on the Y, and then on the Z. So let's go 0.8, gives it a little bit of a dome effect. We're gonna bring that up a little bit more, give it a little tip on it. 0.89 is where we got it at. And here's where the magic happens. We're gonna rotate on the X and bring that down to about 9% to see what it looks like. Okay, cool. Pretty cool shapes you can make with this. You can play with this all you want. It gives you a lot of different uh, options. So if you go quite a bit in, it gives you more of a snail shell, which is cool. Okay, for this example, I'm going to bring this out to the right or left. Um, so it actually extends toward outwards, which is on the X. Okay, and we also do a little bit of change in the rotation there. 15. We did about 13%. Alright, we're going to add a little bit higher, so we're going to go back to 0.95 on those two, and 0.89. Again, this is all depending on what you want to create. I reduced the extension a little bit to 0.19 meters. So one thing here we're going to do is we're going to extend the, um, the disc a little bit more, because it's not completely going all the way through. So we'll go back to the circle, and we're going to increase the actual count. So let's bring this up, so it actually finishes the tip. Something like that. There we go. Okay, let's go ahead and apply this modifier and we're going to go back to the actual object mode and we're going to select the actual object and make sure we select edit mode. Once we're in there, we're going to select all and now we're going to actually go to edge and select bridge edge loop. There we go. Cool. Real simple. Really nice detail. You can, because it's all quads, it, it makes it easier to actually. Uh, the this later. Alright, so now I'm going to here and add a subdivision. We're going to increase that to 2 in the viewport and render 2. Again, you're not going to see what it looks like until you go back to object mode. So we're going to go to object mode and we can right click and shade smooth. This is what it's going to look like. Now we could apply it and now there's a lot of detail there. Okay, so now I'm going to go out actually and add in random um, flow. I'm going to add in random loop extrude in this effect. If you don't have this, you can always select the object and do this yourself and by adding, basically selecting the actual polygons and then taking those polygons and chopping them up a little bit here and there and just adding more detail to it in different um, varieties. But in this uh, tutorial, I'm showing you how to use random flow with random loops. So we're going to select one and then we're going to actually select two and three as well to add more detail. So one thing you got to make sure is having all those three selected and make sure they're highlighted so that you know that they are actually affecting the object. Now this is running really slow because I added the subdivision onto this object already which has added a lot more detail. Um, to get around that you could always do this later. Um, 
I added too much detail here. I could have reduced it, but anyway, I'm just going to proceed to show you how to create this. So I'm adjusting all these just to give it some variations. The first numbers are your first set of um, sections, and then it goes to two, which is smaller, and then three, smaller. So let's make sure that all three of these are selected. So now I got one selected. I'm going to select the second one and third one. Again, this program is really cool. It creates all kinds of different cuts for you. It saves you a lot of time. All right, so all three of these are selected now. So we're going to increase these a little bit. Okay, so here's my final settings. If you want to follow along with these settings, um, you could just copy this if you want. Um, my suggestion, of course, is to create your own um, with different variations to give yourself your own look. Anyway, um, that's pretty much how this um, cuts were created with Random Flow. Again, great program, very easy to use. Now one thing is if you want to get this um, object the way it is, I'm going to add this to my Patreon page, which I'll have the link down below. Alright, so now I'm actually adding and playing in, and I'm extruding it out so it's um, filling in the screen. So we have a floor, basically. And I'm going to select a section of, and I'm going to add a material. And what I'm using here is Hard Ops, which is another add-on. If you don't have that, you could always um, go in there and just say New. It's pretty similar. I'm going to show you both options here to make it easier, but Hard Ops is a quick way to throw in um, new materials, mostly metal. So here I'm going to go back and change this now to Cycles, and I'm going to use GPU. It just looks a lot better to me, at least uh, with using Cycles. I'm going to use Denoising. I'm going to bring this uh, sample down to about 300. I'm going to make sure I add in transparent for the background so I'm not seeing that. Okay, I'm going to bring this roughness a little bit down, change the color a little bit, and add a little bit of a dark blue. Okay, so I've selected the main and I'm actually selected new material. Here I'm going to add in a weight of 1 so it's transparent and bring down the roughness to almost 0, just a little bit above 0 so you can see through it. And again, I'm going to change this color to more of a blue color. Bring it down a little bit more. Just hold it down and bring it through. So I'm like 0 0.2, 0 0.3, somewhere there. So one thing that Random Flow does, it adds for, um, all these objects and separates them out for you. Makes it easier. So I'm going to select each of them. Again. Let's add more materials to the next section here. Adding a roughness, more of a metal look. I find a render I went more with a red color. Uh, again, the blue looked really cool too. This depends what you want to come with. All right, so I hit everything else. Let's see what I'm doing. Make sure I got all the objects. So let's go turn these back on. Yeah, so that angle looks really cool. Looks like a snail shell. That was the rendering um, setup that I did on the beginning of this video. So let's go back to layout. Let's do some more adjustments here. I'm going to add a little bit more detail. So in here, I'm going to actually add a subdivision surface again so I can get a nice tight lines on this object. So let's generate subdivision surface. And basically, I'm going to do this to all three of them. So again, two. Now, my suggestion again would be to have done this earlier on, but I want to do it on the main circle again because we already have a lot of detail there. This is the cuts. Now we're adding in a sphere inside just to give it some emission. Putting that inside. I'm going to scale this down with the S key. I'm going to bring this up with the G key. Somewhere there. Just adding some variations inside this thing. Alright, so now we're going to go to the shading mode. So let's go, ahead and go in here and select the material here inside, which is the ball. And I'm going to bring in an emission. So let's bring the strength up and we're going to change the color. I'm going to go with a blue. Same with the color on the bottom here, with blue. Cool. Again, on the final render, I went with red. This side looks sharper. So I'm going to change the material on the floor now so it has more of a metallic look. 
bring this a little bit closer to the blue side. Come bring the roughness down so I get a nice reflection. This is just basically the layout. That looked really cool. Nice reflection here. Okay, now I'm going to set up the camera. Hit it in place. I'm going to use the control Alt and Zero to get to exactly where I'm showing here on the view port. Let's bring this up a little bit with the G key. Bring the camera into place. Something like that. Okay, so now I'm going to subdivide some of these other parts of the object. So make sure you select each one of those and do a subdivision surface on the modifier section here. I'm going to bring those up to two. So just checking all of them, make sure that they've all been done. Gives a little bit more of a nice edge to these things. Again, this one needs it as well. So again, subdivision surface. I then select two on levels viewpoint. And the rendering is two. So you can see what you're looking at. Okay, one thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the lines on the edges of this point to bring them up so the background will look nicer. So basically I selected those um, three sections. And then I'm going to use the actual extrude tool and I'm going to bring this upward basically on the Z key. So that way it actually um, covers the background, Looks, makes it nicer. And then inside here I'm going to actually select each of these corners and then hit the control P to do a actual bevel. And once I do that, bring it out. Then in here, roll your a mouse wheel to actually add in more cuts. And we're going to do the center section here too. So select that, control B again, pull this out. We do set down a little bit. There we go. It already has the cuts already added. So that looks good. So let's go back to option mode and hit shade smooth. All right, so here we go. So I'm not going to really cover the lighting or adding in HDR eyes to this, more of the modeling, I'm just setting this up into place for the rendering. Again, you can look at other videos that I've created that show these things. Anyway, I hope you liked this video. Uh, if you do, please subscribe. Thank you for joining me. Take care.